Hey guys, so we have had this relationship going for quite some time now, and I feel like we're finally ready. We're finally ready for me to share this particular story with you. Pucker up, it is story time. There was this one time my mom's friend employed me to keep her child alive. Um, she had an urgent engagement to go to, and I was saving up for Tomb Raider 2 for the PlayStation. So it all worked out. That's right, somebody left their child in my supervision. She took something that she deeply cared for, something irreplaceable that she made with her body using science, and just left it with me. He's dead now. Uh, you know what they say, taking care of a child is like riding a bike. Sometimes someone's probably going to get hit by a car. And that's what I told his mom, and she completely agreed. I'm kidding! That never actually happened. Uh, but it was my first time babysitting, and I did make a pretty big rookie mistake. I actually sat on his head, and for a while he stopped moving and breathing, and it was touch and go for a bit, but he's okay. Um, I'm an idiot, I should have been sitting on the legs the whole time, and I know that now. That didn't actually happen either, I didn't sit on them at all. I wasn't sure if I was supposed to, because I have heard lore of people looking after children and not sitting on them, so I wasn't sure if that was like a myth, because sometimes I have trouble telling legend from real life. So Bigfoot, if you're watching this, give me a call sometime, buddy. I want to bro out with you. So anyway, this lady gave me her precious gift of life, and I totally wiped my ass with the gift wrap. The thing that pains me the most about taking care of kids is that they're always trying to show you their stuff. Like their stuff is the greatest stuff, and you've got to sit there and pretend like you don't have way better stuff at home. Like he was showing me his action figures and whatever, and the whole time I was like, come on kid, I've got all the coolest action figures. Who are you trying to impress? Who are you trying to impress? Because it's not me. I'm not impressed. This isn't the look of an impressed person. I am older, so it is just a given that my stuff is way better than yours. But it was my job to keep him both alive and happy, which isn't an easy task. It's not like you could just sprinkle some water on his head like he's a houseplant and then leave him for a day and pray to God he doesn't die. No, he was being a real prick. We can only watch the shows that he wanted to watch and only play the games that he wanted to play. But how else do you entertain a tiny person? Well, you don't slam their head in the door, which is what I did. And don't get me wrong, it's not like I saw him walking there and was like... You know what? Fuck your head. <clears throat> no, no. I did one of those things where you're walking through the door, and once you're through the door, you don't give a fuck about who's behind you because everybody knows how to work a door. So I was about to kick my shoes off when all of a sudden I heard... <clears throat> Which is the exact sound of a seven-year-old getting slammed in the head by a screen door. Oh, you don't believe me? Well, I was there. I did it. I have first-hand field experience, unfortunately, in the subject. Trust me when I say I know what the sound of a screen door beaming a child in the head is. Of course these people didn't have a regular screen door. Why would they? That's, that's too safe. No, they had one of those screen doors that has like ninja-like reflexes with a hydraulic pump. So as soon as I let go, this thing swiftly swung through the air and with no remorse slammed into this kid's tiny head like the Hulk's fist smashing through a brick wall. And the part about this whole thing that was weird for me was that he just stood there screaming and crying like I was supposed to know what he was saying. I don't speak that language. What I needed was like a translator to come in and decipher all the boos and whos and put together this puzzle that is the Da Vinci Code of Tears and just tell me what he wants because I'm already really bad at consoling just about anything in its time of need. I didn't even want to touch him because I didn't want to get my shirt wet. I ended up giving him like a, a bag of ice for his head like that was going to undo the brain damage. So it's later that evening and the sun, the sun has gone down and the moon? The moon has risen into the night sky and is just kind of hanging out and, you know, I'm putting this kid to bed like a reasonable caretaker, but where it becomes unreasonable is where he asks me to look under his bed for monsters, which seems crazy, but when you really think about it, it's batshit insane. So I look under his bed and lo and behold, to my surprise, not a single monster to be found. This is, there's, there's nothing. There's not a, not a monster in sight, not a creature, not even a goblin or a ghoul. There, there, there's nothing. There's absolutely nothing there. So I go back up to 
to report my findings to the kid, and he asked me if I'm sure. Like I'm, like I'm gonna lie to him about a disgusting beast hanging out under his bed. When I went to check under his bed, what I really did was... Oh, you're gonna be okay! But it was clear, I could tell this kid was pretty concerned with monsters being under his bed. So, what I, what I said to, you know, sort of comfort him was... Look. If monsters were real, if, if, there was a real-life monster under your bed, and he wanted to get you, he would have done it by now. Which is not a good thing to say to a child. You guys, don't ever say that, because as soon as I said that, he broke out into tears once again. But in all seriousness, if there was a monster, I'm not saving that kid. I'm gonna focus all my efforts into me, making sure Numero Uno is still alive. Gotta keep the captain safe, you know? Gotta make sure the chief gets out unscathed. That kid means nothing to me. That kid was five dollars an hour, which isn't enough to battle a giant tentacle monster with a hundred eyes. I'm sorry. I know this is all ridiculous, but if monsters were real, do you think that they would be able to sneak into your house without you noticing, without anybody seeing this giant disgusting thing wandering around, Find your bed, let alone fit under it, and then wait just till you put your tiny head on that soft pillow to jump out and suck out your bones? There is probably a much easier way to get bones. So anyway, thanks for listening guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I will see the crew on 2-4 on Tuesday. And I'm currently sitting like a cool teacher who wants to rap about math. Let's throw down. 2 plus 2 is 4. What? 2 plus 2? equals four motherfu- Hey guys, welcome to Dare Matt G, that thing on the internet where sometimes we look back on a previous year in videos. Yeah, I realize it's already February, but I don't care, I'll look back on 2014 next week if I want. 2004.